To our podcast channel, um, I'm your host Maggie. Today we have a new guest, Given, who is based in Sri Lanka right now and shares his offshore studying experience. Hello, how are you? Hi, Maggie. I'm doing great. Yeah. Do you mind introduce a bit yourself to our audience? Yeah. So my name is Gitmin Bhandari Silva. I'm currently an offshore student. I'm studying at Victoria University of Wellington. I'm in my second year. Ooh. Studying Bachelor of Design Innovation, majoring in VFX and animation. Oh, second year. So, have you been to New Zealand before? No, I've actually never like flown out of my home country before. So, you have been studying for like off like offshore student for two years already. Yeah, about two. Ah, so what are some of the most noticeable differences between like? Oh no, you only studying online, isn't it? So, what is the differences between you think studying in person and online? Well, uh, in person to online, I'd say one of the main things that affects me is the access to university resources. Mm -hmm. Since I'm doing like uh, design subjects, I have a lot of uh, studio work and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Access to libraries, even though the online library is there, there are some books that I can't find on. The online library mm -hmm. and also apart from that i think the biggest thing that affects me is the time difference oh yeah what is the yes. time now it's in the morning right yeah it's almost 8 a.m sometimes i have classes from like 3 a.m so it's kind of like six hours differences between you know this year and your country yeah six and a half hours and uh, when daylight savings there it's seven and a half hours so those are like some of the most noticeable differences that I have to face. Yeah, that's horrible. And what is your experiences communicating to people online? Well, communicating with people online, I'd say is tough because I actually started my studies at uh, Up Education, my foundation studies back in 2020, mm -hmm. which is also online. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, it was a bit hard because not many people wanted to, you know, switch on their cameras, some people wouldn't unmute. It was a bit awkward, but you slowly figure it out, like you open up to people and you share social media handles and that's how I really got communicating with people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's tough, but it's also fun when you get used to it. Yeah, and what do you think has been most beneficial about studying offshore? Um, beneficial about studying offshore, I'd say mm -hmm. one thing is I'm at home, I'm with my family and friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, I mean, accommodation and all isn't a problem right now because I'm at my home. Uh, food and all that's not a problem because my mom cooks, I cook, so it's all there. Mm -hmm. And also, I guess everything is like, uh, how would you say, like, I'm used to it, right? It's not a big change for me, mm -hmm. but I'm too used to it now, so I'm hoping for a change. Yeah, I love studying online actually because you know I can just stay home and you know cover free environment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you think that the cost of living is manageable in your home country? Yeah, cost of living is pretty manageable here compared to New Zealand because there's a massive difference in like exchange rates and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, living here since I'm with my parents, it's not a big issue. But even if you were to live separately, it's manageable if you have like a part-time job and all that. Yeah. For now though. Right. So what are this what are some issues you face while studying offshore? So I'd say some of the biggest issues I face joining in from Sri Lanka is the fact that we don't have uh, stable power. Mm. So we are prone to having like a lot of power cuts. Oh. Right now, we're in the middle of an economic crisis. So due to that, we have scheduled power cuts. Mm -hmm. Previously, uh, it used to go up to like 14, 15 hours a day without power. So it's really hard to manage your workload when you have such long power cuts going on. That would be one of the biggest issues that affects me a lot. I see. So you have been studying like two years or so like online so what experts of studying online do you think like it could be improved <laughs> yeah i think um some things that could be improved while people study online would be more engagement from university yeah. and other 
organizations because like a lot of the online students are secluded depends like i prefer trying to meet more people online sparking conversation but not everyone is you know use that kind of thing yeah or it's not it's a bit too shy or something like that but if you have more events and stuff you can get more students involved so i remember taking part the second i joined you know at university at a i think it is a small talent show so things like that really you know get people used to things online it makes it a bit more fun so i think those are things that could be improved on yeah i agree with that and so what is your experience is making friends online especially victoria friends <laughs> victoria uni so so um i remember when we started uni um, yeah. back in 21 <laughs> like we had orientation i'm i'm so happy that we had it online yeah and there were so many students online that the first thing i think everyone did before uh, the host started talking even everyone just started throwing their social media handles mm-hmm. ig discord servers and within 5 minutes i think i added like i don't know 15 20 people mm-hmm. and we started making little little groups on social media because you know it's not just one or two people who studying online due mm-hmm. to the pandemic it was a lot so we yeah. all sort of made like an online community together so it was pretty fun yeah but, yeah and also it's so hard to talk to other people while you doing online class because everyone just turn off the camera you have exactly. to unmute yourself you can't just talk to people like typing you can't yeah. if it's recording <laughs> and do you have any advice for offshore students making friends online maybe uh so i'd really say is like you really should you know break through your comfort zone Mm-hmm. cuz i know like switching on the camera is so much work plugging it in and all that but switching it on can you know spark up a conversation make it easy you'll be a bit more comfortable with the other person mm-hmm. i'd say try to engage as much as you can with like your colleagues during class and stuff cuz mm-hmm. for us studying online we have only a short period of time to spend with our like the other students and all that mm-hmm. rather than being in in person you can run into each other on campus cafe stuff like that I'm saying is to make the most of the little time you have, and you know, just you know, spark up conversation, find people who have same interests, and just you know, go yeah. for it. Yeah, and yeah, and how would you recommend balancing classwork with daily life? That is a tough question. So balancing <laughs> classwork with daily life is a bit tough because my classwork usually revolves around a different time zone. Mm-hmm. and my daily life goes with like a completely different time zone so it's a bit tough mm-hmm. but it's all about scheduling things ahead mm-hmm. so like even with the power cuts i make it essential to like make a plan of what i'm going to do with the time i have the power yeah. and the time i don't have the power i do other things that i need to do at home clean my room cook something like that so yeah. it's a bit tough but you have to work around it see like for me like a lot of people like going out and partying on sundays as well mm-hmm. i can't do that cuz mid like past midnight on sunday i have classes so i can't afford to be you know sleepy during class so things like that you have to sort of give up but it's good you can taking you can you can take your phone like online and partying and no one knows because your camera is on <laughs> so that's the thing i prefer to like keep a camera on so that's like a downside for me i can't really do that yeah and and But, yeah. How do you maintain the um, physical and mental health as an offshore student? Um, so physical health, mm-hmm. I'd say since I'm home most of the time and we don't have lockdowns in our country right now, other than a couple of curfews here and there, I would make it a point to like try to work out, go for walks and stuff. I am quite extroverted, so I do go out often. We have a lot of activities to do around the country, so I usually go for things like that. Mm-hmm. I think mental health is a really important point because that's mm-hmm. something I know personally me and a lot of other students who do online study are affected by. So that is something you actually have to reach out to help. I'm telling this to everyone because it's really important. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people like like you know I'll just bottle it in you know just forget about it. It doesn't work like that. The more you bottle it in, it's eventually going to come out at a time you're like stuck with exams and submissions. So the best thing is to reach out. I personally make it a point to talk to my friends. I give them a call. I talk to them, you know, I'm struggling with this. What do you think I should do? Getting a different perspective from another person always helps me. So I'd say that's a really good way to sort of like balance things out with your mental health, and also talk to other university students because they also suffer the same thing. So it's easy to like 
you know, get set to the same frequency. Yeah, and who should be the um, offshore student contact if they have academic questions? So for academic questions and stuff, you can actually use the student learning options we have mm. on the Victoria University website. So That's see, yeah. So for anyone struggling with like academic writing and other classes, you can check it out. Yeah. I'm not too sure if there is much for design subjects, mm -hmm. but um, the next option I'd say is talk to the international support team. They are very helpful. Mm -hmm. And um, other organizations like Visa, yeah. which is also like the Victoria International Students Association, they're all very helpful. They'll help you out in any way. If you have an issue with the university, they'll help you sort it out. So I'd say contact them. Yeah, I use student learning a lot. They're really useful. I, I need them to check every of my assignment every single time. So I'm super recommended. <laughs> and what, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and what are some organizations students can contact for general support, like in your opinion? <laughs> So like I previously mentioned, uh, Visa is an option. They are very helpful. Yeah. International student support, again, really helpful. They get back to you really quickly rather than going through the whole uh, sending a message to finance and all that stuff regarding problems. I'd say just talk to someone on the international team because they'll provide you with support to how to move forward. I've actually contacted organizations like uh, the US as well, who actually helped me deal with certain issues uh, regarding my university life. So that's also another great organization to contact. And also like feel free to message me or anyone else on like the ambassador's team. It'll be awesome. Mm, all righty. Thank you so much. And those information are very informative. And yeah, thank you so much for being our guest today and talking with us about your experiences. Yeah, and so every one of yours, please stay tuned with us. We are national ambassadors. So thank you. See you next time. Thank you, Kevin. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for having me.